What's up guys and welcome to my video. This video is all about device drivers. What actually are they, what do they do and what's happening in the future with Nvidia and AMD's graphic drivers. Now if you don't know what a driver is, it is pretty simple really. Basically you have the hardware and a driver tells it what to do. It's a software set of instructions that tells it what to do, how to run and how to run efficiently and the key word there is efficiency. The better the driver, the better the hardware will run. In the case of graphics drivers, the better the driver, the better your games will perform. If it's more efficient, you're going to get more out of your hardware, and it's going to mean that the thing you're trying to do with it is going to run better. Now, one of the key things to keeping your computer running smoothly is to make sure that you update your drivers regularly. Windows does offer a service that allows you to upgrade your drivers automatically. It will tell you in a little pop-up window down there or wherever on your computer you have taskbar, it will tell you if a driver is out of date and whether you need to update it. But unfortunately this actually doesn't catch all the drivers and it's the same for different higher spec companies and different lower spec companies. You'd kind of need to go to their website unfortunately. Um, that's quite easy to do, um, just find out what it is. Say there might be a new driver for a new headset or something you've got, um, all you need to do is find out what it's called, Google it and go to their website, be careful. Um, you want to really only go to the proper website, you don't want to risk getting something that isn't what you think it is, and then just click on the device that it is, so in this case it's a Vengeance headset, um, get the Vengeance headset driver, and if there's a new one it will tell you, and then you upgrade to that, and then your device should run better than it does before. If you do this with everything on your computer, then everything's going to keep running smoothly. But the main thing is graphics. If you're into PC gaming, which a lot of you obviously are, then the main thing that you probably already know, but you need to keep your graphics card driver up to date at all times. This is going to mean all your games will run at their best. Now the place to do that, if you have an NVIDIA GeForce card, is through the NVIDIA GeForce Experience it is now. Um, if you don't have that, then just go onto the NVIDIA website and it will tell you all you need to do from there and it will give you the downloads. The same with AMD, you need to go to their respective Catalyst Control Center and you need to download the latest drivers um, either through online or through the Catalyst software and it, it will allow you to upgrade your stuff by little pop-ups and it should be fairly simple and straightforward to do. Now with each new driver more games will be supported and they'll be supported in a way that will allow them to run more efficiently. A recent example was Tomb Raider on the GeForce NVIDIA side, it just didn't run that well on GeForce cards when it first came out. A few weeks later, new drivers were unleashed and it looks and ran a lot better than it did before. New drivers just allow games to run better. Now, The traditional way that drivers will get better is by allowing the games to use the GPU more effectively. Graphics card drivers are obviously going to improve the graphics card. But NVIDIA and AMD are working on something new, and something that you may have already heard of. They are looking at increasing the performance of your games, but by using the CPU more efficiently. But how can you do this with a graphics card driver? Well, the graphics card obviously has to talk to other things in your PC, and the main one really being the CPU, or the processor. And the more efficiently you can get one instruction from the GPU to the CPU, is by doing that faster and more efficiently. And if you do this, then it's going to use less CPU, and then that CPU is going to be able to be used for different things, and if you've got a CPU that maybe isn't quite up to the task, as your graphics card is, and you've got a CPU bottleneck, it's going to increase your performance in your games by allowing your CPU to do more stuff with your games and allowing your GPU to catch up. Now AMD are doing this by developing a new API. An API is an application programming interface, and this API is called Mantle, and you may have heard of that. So any games that will then use Mantle should then be able to use the CPU more efficiently and you'll gain extra frames a second in your games. An example of a game that allows this is Battlefield 4 and obviously that is one of the biggest PC titles out there so it's a great one for AMD to have support in. On the Nvidia side of the camp they've recently unveiled the latest beta drivers and these rather than using a new API, you know the Mantle, they currently use the one that's currently available, DirectX and DirectX 11. Now their idea is that all the games out there are DirectX based, so why create something new? Because it's not going to actually help what you've got now. So their drivers should benefit all games pretty much. Any fairly recent game that's DirectX 9 or DirectX 11 should see a frames per second boost with their new driver if you're CPU limited. The advantages of Mantle is that it's built from the ground up, so it should, in theory, 
be better than anything Nvidia can come up with if they're currently using something that's already out there. If you're building something from scratch, then it should, in theory, be better. But of course, it's all very well being better, but if you don't have any support, no one's actually going to be able to benefit, and there are very few games at the moment that support this, the main ones being Battlefield 4 and Thief. Nvidia's approach, in theory, could be a lot better, because if it gets the same sort of performance increase as Mantle does, it's going to work in all your games, and so you should see a performance boost in pretty much all your games if you're CPU limited. But of course the disadvantage there is that it may not ever be as good as Mantle could potentially be, because Mantle's built from the ground up to do this. Now if you want to see more numbers on this and actually see how it will actually affect your games and some more nerdy stats, which of course many of you are interested in, then just see the description below and I've left some links in there that take you to websites that show you new benchmarks and show you what these drivers actually do in their current state. The main thing to take from this is that Nvidia and AMD are actually looking out for you if you're CPU limited rather than just boosting the power of your GPU. If you're CPU limited, then a new graphics driver isn't really going to help you if it only boosts the CPU performance, because you need the extra CPU performance, not the GPU performance. Now from my personal experience, I am CPU limited. I have two GTX 680 cards in SLI, and that's quite a lot of graphics horsepower, and unfortunately even an overclocked i5-2500K can't really keep up in the latest and greatest titles. Simply installing a beta driver has enabled me to go from about 35 to 40 frames a second in Crisis 3 to pretty much a near constant 60, believe it or not. That's a big gain. The same goes for Battlefield 4. That has increased just because the CPU bottleneck, while not being lifted, it has been upped a little bit so I can gain extra performance from my GPUs as the CPU is not bottlenecked as much. But unfortunately, most of us aren't CPU limited, most of us are still GPU limited, and we won't really see any gains, if at all, from these new drivers. But it's very good that Nvidia and AMD are working on this, because of course they're going to keep working on upgrading their GPUs as well, and so even if you don't see a benefit from the CPU upgrade, their drivers are going to keep updating and they're going to keep benefiting you on the GPU side anyway. And that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope it's explained a little bit more about what drivers are, what they do, and how they affect your gameplay and your computer in general. If you want more videos like this, of course, don't forget to subscribe to PC Centric for plenty more content like this, and of course, as always, plenty more content on the way. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, or send me a private message through YouTube, and I will try and get back to you as soon as I can. One of the best ways to contact me is actually on Twitter. Follow at PC Centric on Twitter, and just send me a tweet on there and I'll pretty much get a notification straight away on my phone and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So as always, if you've liked it, leave a thumbs up, say it was good, leave a comment saying, yeah, this, this is good, this is, this, is what I'm all, this is what I'm all about. If you don't think it was so good, unfortunately, leave a dislike, I'll be a little bit upset, but that's quite all right, this is professional business. Um, so just click the dislike button, um, but do leave a comment if you can to say why you didn't like it, because it will help in the next video. So once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.